Today in the lab we're going to be working again on the Amiga 4000 and want to do a final set of upgrades to this machine before we proceed to the final build. With all these other fancy upgrades that this Amiga is getting, it seems fitting that I give it what is in my opinion the best accelerator card available for these 32-bit big box Amigas. And this, this is it. Uh, this is a Cyberstorm PowerPC card manufactured by Phase 5. And this was the first PowerPC card that was generally available for any Amiga. And really is still kind of the only one. Now these are pretty rare, so I'm lucky to have this. Really wanted this back in the day, but I never was able to afford it at that time. Um, so this, this I got a few years back from a gentleman... I think it's Switzerland, um, but it's a great card and it'll be a great addition to this. Let's go over some of the features of this card. This card has a 68060 and a PowerPC 604E. In addition, it has 128 megabytes of fast RAM on the card. So this board also has an ultra SCSI host adapter, aka SCSI 3, aka wide SCSI. This is likely the fastest SCSI interface available for the Amiga and tops out somewhere between 20 megabytes a second to 40 megabytes a second depending on the drives and the settings. Now this has an unusual connector that you won't normally see on the Amiga and this is a 68 pin SCSI connector. 68 pins because instead of uh, 8 bit SCSI, which is what the 50 pin connector is. This is 16 bit SCSI, so it needs those extra pins for those extra data lines. Um, and this was super uncommon on the Amiga, but fairly common in high end servers uh, up to the mid 2000s, maybe as late as the 2010s. Um, so I can still find parts and components and drives for this relatively easily. Next there's this weird slot down at the bottom. Now this was designed for use with a graphics card that I don't have. May get in future and add to this build but for right now I don't have it. But this is actually a PCI slot. Now you may be wondering if this has a PCI slot in it why do you need the mediator? Well and that's that's because of this odd connector and the fact that there's only one of them. Um, if there were something available today that would could use this and build a, a bus board out of it, I would use that instead of the mediator. A product like that does exist. It's called a G-Rex, but those are very rare. Rare as hen's teeth. So um, I am not going to be able to find one. And even if I did, driver support somewhat lacking because they are so rare. So that means we have to do it for the mediator with the PCI and this this much faster PCI interface on the accelerator just has to go unused. Such is life. So next, got this Big Ram Plus. Now, this is a Zorro 3 RAM expansion module made by individual computers. Not the fastest RAM. Zorro 3 RAM is pretty slow, especially compared to like on accelerator RAM on the Cyberstorm, but RAM is RAM, and I may need this for some Amiga S4 programs. Unfortunately, even though I've had this for several years and was running it in, in other Amigas, um, one of the components fell off, you know, while I was kind of moving stuff around. Um, I think I could just solder this back in, but I want to do some research to make sure I know the right thing to do. Um, looked like a bad solder joint on this, you know, such is life. Um, so this may not go in anytime soon until I get this fixed. But it is going to be part of the, the, the final build. I had been testing with this to make sure everything worked. So in order to get the best performance out of the Cyberstorm and its ultra SCSI host adapter, I need some equivalent disks. So these are some 300 gigabyte, 1500 RPM 
Ultra 320 SCSI discs uh, that I have a bunch of. I also have some 174 gigabyte ones, but these are some of the last Ultra SCSI drives produced. And you can still get them new old stock, at least for a while, and they are very fast. In fact, they will saturate the SCSI interface of the Cyberstorm. They're designed for much faster and newer systems, but they are compatible. These drives use a different connector from what we saw in the Cyberstorm. This is an SCA80 connector, designed for servers, pretty common on things like Sun Microsystems or you know, HP servers, but we're gonna have to adapt this connector to the 68 pin connector available on the Cyberstorm. So there's multiple ways that we can do that. So first is an adapter card like this. So this, if I don't knock my camera out, slides into the back of the unit like this and converts that SCA connector to a standard um, ultra SCSI and also gives me pinouts for power and for selecting the SCSI ID and other things. However, I've decided that I don't want any spinning disks inside of the Amiga. And the reason for this is these generate a lot of heat. I've already got heat problems in there. And when I used to use this machine back in the day, I never had internal disks in it. They were always external. So, I got to thinking, you know, they make external SCSI controllers, so let me buy one. So I bought this. This is a, uh, a Sun Microsystems device. This is a Spark Storage Multipack, which is an external SCSI device enclosure for 12 drives. This kind of adds to the ridiculousness of this build, because that's a lot of drives. And I got this new old stock, um, so I won't unbox it here, because that's not so interesting. And this is the unit itself from the front. Um, that's about twice as tall as the Amiga 4000. And, uh, you know, like I said, it can hold 12 drives, so this is a big thing. Let me turn it on its side, and I'll show the, uh, the internal guts of this. So this is the unit from the side, and you can really see why this was popular in servers. So each drive of these 12 drives comes on this little bracket, right? And these are, focus. Uh, see if I can get some good focus on this. These are pretty standard Sun brackets. I've got tons of them from my days working on Sun hardware. Um, and to insert or remove a drive, you just line it up with the slot and either push it in or or uh, or pull it out. No other cables, no other connectors. It's very simple to add and remove a drive. Some advanced systems even had hot swap capability where you could remove and add drives while it was running. Now, this can't do that, but there are things out there that do. Now, if we zoom in a bit, we see numbers on the unit here. Four, five, eight, these are the SCSI IDs, so I don't even have to fiddle around with SCSI IDs when installing these drives. I just pick the bay that matches the ID I want and put it in there and it magically gets the right ID. What you notice though is these aren't numbered quite sequentially. There's gaps, so it goes from 5 to 8. If you look up here at the top, there's also no 0 or 1. Now the reason for that is 0 and 1 are normally the OS disk, maybe the CD-ROM drive on a Sun Microsystem machine, maybe the first two OS disks, and, and 7, sometimes 6, are common SCSI host adapter IDs. So they've thought of you know, those being common IDs that are used and have excluded them from this box. Going into handheld mode, we can get a look at the back plane of this unit and it's very simple again no cables just a just one connector and again this is why this was kind of preferred for server systems and stuff like that is very easy to replace very easy to maintain very few wires very clean now here's a look at the back of the unit this has two very big beefy fans 1500k rpm drives get very hot 
and so this has really good airflow to keep those drives cool. And we also see the two wide SCSI connectors here. In theory, you could daisy chain some of these together, but realistically, you could only get 15 devices on a wide SCSI bus, so there's only so many other things you can daisy chain. This unit is self-terminating, so I don't have to buy a separate terminator, it, which is really nice, fewer cables. So, the question now is, how do we connect the SCSI enclosure to the Amiga? Well, in the old days, I actually used a bracket in one of these card slots to provide a SCSI port. However, in this build, all of these are going to be full. Luckily, the Amiga has a little expansion hole here, which was oftentimes used for external SCSI ports. I've never had anything there, so using it for this seemed like it was very appropriate, and it would prevent me from having to cut any custom holes in the cases. Now, the first problem with this, if you look at the connector here, this is a pretty massive connector. And the connector kind of fits in this expansion port, but it doesn't really. Like if I were to put, uh, if I were to try and put the other end of this and mount it on here, it just wouldn't fit. I mean, this is a big honking cable. And it was a problem back in the day, too. So as an alternate design, we have these very high density connectors, which are much smaller, and you can see, you know, easily fit in here. And I was able to find an adapter. So this converts from 68 pin SCSI, wide SCSI, to one of these very high density connectors. And this does fit here in the mounting port. However, I'm going to have to cut some custom holes uh, to actually get it mounted in here, but this will fit. I have no idea what this came from, but uh, it's just a very simple, you know, passive adapter. So the final link in the chain is to get this adapter connected to the Cyberstorm PPC. This was my first cable that I bought for this purposes. And I bought this, you know, specific one for two reasons. One, it's round, so it doesn't impede airflow very much, and it's relatively short. SCSI buses are limited by maximum length of the, the total cable. So the more cable that I have inside of the case, the more kind of wasted uh, wasted length that I have. And for earlier SCSI iterations, the, the narrow 8-bit SCSI 1 and SCSI 2 that's pretty common on the Amiga, the cable lengths are pretty long, you know, 15 meters, I think. It kind of depends upon the exact, uh, you know, exact specification you're talking about. But with Ultra SCSI, and especially with these high-performance Ultra SCSI discs, the cable length becomes pretty short. Um, so a meter, maybe two at most. So I don't want to have a lot of wasted cable. Now, the Cyberstorm PPC does not provide termination power. And so the astute amongst you can probably deduce what the problem is with this cable. So SCSI buses have to be terminated on both ends of the cable. And for my setup, the sun unit over here provides one side of the termination. But if the Cyberstorm doesn't provide termination, then this cable connected to the Cyberstorm and then to this unit and then to the rest of the system leaves one side of it unterminated. So this won't work. And in fact, I ran into errors pretty quick while testing this out um, because of that lack of termination. So this first cable's out, I'm gonna go to the parts bin, maybe I'll resell it because it obviously was used somewhere. And I got this new cable. Now this is an improvement. And so this still has two connectors, so one for the Cyberstorm and then one for my, my external adapter here. But this also has a terminator in it, an Ultra 320 terminator. So this is perfect. This is uh, gonna provide termination at the Amiga end of this cable. And then with the, uh, the termination power on the Sun unit, I will have both sides equally terminated. In addition, this, this cable's shorter, and, uh, and so it should work out great. 
So I tap new screw holes and cut the adapter panel down to size. There it is, just like it always was there, meant to be there. There it is attached to the the Cyberstorm and while the cable's still a bit long, it all fits in there, but it is still a bit cramped, you know, big box amigas. Now, big problem here is the terminator sits right on top of the 68060, but I think with some judicious application of zip ties that'll be no problem at all so that's it for today and these are going to be some great upgrades for this Amiga 4000 getting very close to where I can kind of put this all together however waiting to fix some parts again like you saw the the big RAM plus and there's some other things that I need to figure out like the cooling while I figure those out, I'm going to probably switch over to actually configuring and making sure that this machine works and is stable. And then we'll come back later to the final build.